In this presentation, we will discuss and take a look at an example of horizontal analysis. When considering horizontal analysis, we're considering performance over time. So we're comparing period over period of the same company typically. So that would be year over year. We could have two years. We could have multiple years. We're going to be comparing two years here in the horizontal type of analysis. We're going to do this for the financial statements, including the income statement and the balance sheet. So here's going to be the income statement. We have the comparative income statement, meaning we have the current year and the prior year. Note that oftentimes we'll see the current year first when we consider the lined up income statements or financial statements side by side. And that might be counterintuitive to many of us who would think, well, I would think it would read from old to new, right? We're, we're reading the old point in time last year to current year. But no, we're a bit impatient oftentimes in the accounting and financial statement world or readers of the financial statement. They want to see the most current stuff, which we would assume is the most important stuff first. So most of the time we'll have the current year first and then we'll have the prior year uh, after that. That's going to be a typical type of convention. So then we're going to do a comparison year over year. And that would, of course, make sense. Well, since we'll say, well, how did we do last year compared to this year? Well, let's compare, let's line them up line by line in terms of the income statement, the performance statement. And remember, when we're considering the income statement, we're considering performance. How did we do over a time period as opposed to the balance sheet, which is considering a point in time? So we're going to say, this is what we did last year. This is what we did this year. Let's just take a difference between the two. We'll create another column, just subtracting those two out. So of course, each line of these are just basically subtracting out We've got the current year minus the prior year. So the current year, 229, 234 minus the prior year, 215639. That's going to give us the 13595. We're going to do that all the way down. So the net sales had a change, 13595 increase. That's good. So we could look at that and say, hmm, that's pretty good. And then the cost of goods sold, it went up as well. It's an expense. So that's bad. But of course, we would expect that to be the case given the fact that the cost of goods sold is usually pretty much related to the net sales it being what we're typically selling or the cost of the things we're selling the gross margin went up as, as well that's good research and development is an expense it went up that's kind of bad we would think that's you know why did we spend more on research and development we can look into that we have the selling and general admin also expense it went up and the operating income went up the other income went up so from a dollar perspective, we can go through this change and we can glean some information. We can say this is this is useful. We can see why we would do this. This would make perfect sense. If we're trying to think of the financial statements, how are we doing year over year? What's the trend look like? We would simply do a, a year over year comparison, line them up, take the difference between the two, typical horizontal type of analysis. However, we might want to break this out to a percentage basis as well. And that will give us some more insights oftentimes. So we want to see the percentage change oftentimes. And that's going to say, okay, how do we calculate the percentage change? We'll say, we'll take the change column, which is 13,595, and divide it by the prior year, not the current year, the prior year. That's the tricky kind of thing. That's the thing that ties people up. People often forget is that we're going to divide it by the prior year so we're going to take the, the change that happened divided by the prior year 215639 that's going to give us if we move the decimal over the 6.3 percent and so and this is applicable not just to financial statement type of analysis but any type of thing where we're basically trying to see how did we do year over year like batting average it happens in sports oftentimes happens in performance in terms of job performance in many cases we're trying to say, how did we do year over year? Well, let's take the dollar change and then we'll take a percentage change. And the percentage change can be really useful to us because we can compare this percentage change to other industries possibly and look at their percentage change, even though they don't have the same amount of, of dollars that we have. And we can also take this percentage change and we can apply general type of rules for types of analysis uh, rules that we can go through and look into. For example, we could set a rule that says, hey, I'm going to look into any type of percentage change that is over a certain percentage change. So we could say 10%, anything over 10%, we're going to look into, we're going to analyze, we're going to write down, we're going to take notes, we're going to see why that change happened, we're going to dig into it more. Cannot do that so easily with a dollar change, you could, you could set just a dollar change and say, I'm going to look at everything over this dollar change. But note that different accounts, of course, have different dollar amounts. And therefore, when we set just a dollar type amount, 
It could be significant compared to one account, but not another. It might be useful oftentimes to, to look at a percentage change and then think about the significance of a percentage change. Both have their pros and cons. Also, if we were to compare it to other companies, then if we're thinking, how did another company do year over year? And if they're a lot larger than us, if we're, for example, a small hamburger shop and we're comparing ourselves to McDonald's and we want to glean some information from McDonald's, get some insights from what they're doing, then we can't really take a look at our dollar amounts here because they're, they're not going to make any sense as we look at the dollar amount change for something like uh, McDonald's. But we can look at McDonald's year over year horizontal analysis and say, oh, did their sales go up You know, 6.3%? Did their cost of goods sold go up 7.4% in relation to that as well? What's their gross margin percentage increase? And we could take a look at those percentage increases and consider whether or not uh, we're in alignment in some ways. And again, this is very useful for things like uh, batting averages and stuff, any kind of performance that we're trying to measure, any job performance. That's basically what statistics are for baseball. We're measuring their job performance. How are they doing? Well, we have to consider how they did last year. Uh, compared to this year are they improving are they improving in comparison to other players well other players had more at bats or le at less at bats how can we basically account for that well we could start to look at uh, percentages and that's one way that we, we we're going to look at these things so very useful for many different areas so we could go through this and then say okay anything over 10 percent let's say we're going to figure out and and then look into further so the sales, we'd say it's it's a 6.3. So that's not a big change. Cost of goods sold went up a little bit higher than uh, the sales. So that might be a little concerning. Why would the sales go up by 6% and the cost of goods sold went up by more? You would think they would be going up at, at about the same rate. And then and then the gross margin, of course, is a, is a function of those two changes. The research and development went up by 15.3%. That's fairly high. We could go into this and dig into that and say, hey, why are we doing more research and development? Is it paying off? What's the long-term objective on the research and development? Why is that going up? Selling and admin, it's, it's fairly in the range. Total operating expenses, of course, is a function of these two, mainly the research and development going up. And then we have the operating income and we have the other income, which went up significantly. So we'd want to take a look at that. Why did that go up significantly? Also note that these ratios have uh, limitations as well because it's possible that, for example, if this goes up significantly, but it's a small dollar amount in total in comparison to to everything else so for example if this was like one dollar in the in the prior year and then it went up to twenty dollars in the current year we'd have a significant percentage change but from a perspective of total dollar amount it wouldn't be be significant really in terms of is there going to be a significant impact or effect on the financial statements so we want to uh, we have to use both of these basic methods and use just logic and say let's look at all the all the data that we have here and think about what's the best picture we can come up with and and then create a plan to figure out how to analyze the financial statements so then we have the income before taxes the income taxes and the net income we can of course do this as well for the balance sheet remember as we think about the balance sheet we're thinking about as a point in time so we're trying to basically look at a comparison of where we stood in a prior period where did we stand last year in this case and where do we stand this year as opposed to how did we do in performance like a stopwatch like the income statement what did we do how much did we earn how much how much did the stopwatch go up in this case we're saying where where what is our end position at the end of this year compared to the end of last year same kind of routine though we'll do a comparison between the two so we'll take the last year here's the cash we had uh this year and here's the cash we had last year, and it went down by 195. And so we go to the short-term investments, it went up, and we go to the accounts receivable. And that's, these two, of course, might be related. We would say, hmm, why did cash go down? Maybe we put more money into the investments. Or, and then we have the accounts receivable, it went up. We've got the inventory went up, other receivables went up. So you can see that this would be a common type of, of analysis we would do. Obviously, we're going to say, well, here's last year. Here's this year. Let's line them up and subtract the two. See what the difference is. Where do we stand as of last year? Where do we stand as of this year? What's the dollar change? Then, of course, we can take the percentage change in the same fashion, giving us that same kind of information that could be useful for us. And then we can basically look at that percentage change and say, are there any of these percentages 
that might stand out like obviously this one stands out inventory stands out to us and says hmm that's a pretty big percentage change I might not have noticed that change as much or, or focused in on it if i just looked at the dollar change and so it's going to give us another look another feel for this information that we can then use to go back through so obviously the cash change fairly small short-term investments 15 percent increase we might go in there and, and say you know why did we put more in, into investments accounts receivable 13 somewhat significant we can look in the receivables or say are we collecting on the receivables why are the receivables going up do we have uncollectible receivables on the books or something like that inventories has has a significant increase and we could think about that in terms of a percentage basis although the dollar amount might not be that significant so we might look into that and say are we holding on the inventory too much i mean are we overvaluing inventory uh, are, you know should we have we be holding on to less inventory at, at any given time it might be more efficient other current assets we have a, a large increase so we probably want to look into other current assets break them out and say let's log that out let's break them out and look into them and then we've got the long-term market securities also went up so we're investing overall more in securities property plant and equipment did we buy more property plant and equipment we, we basically want to put that in place there's a significant increase so what i would assume there was a purchase is that purchase doing well so we might want to just be able to, to justify that intangible assets went down and so we might want to look into you know how did the intangible assets go down something like goodwill or patents or something like that and then non-current assets so we can look into each of these individually depending on which ones have the significant changes and then we can consider the liabilities of course now we're just going to the liability side same thing we'll have the difference in the liabilities and then we'll take the percentage change. So remember, the percentage change is simply going to be the change, the difference in dollar amount, 11,755, over the prior year, which is the 37,294 in our example, to give the 31.5%. Here's the 31.5%. And again, we can go through each of these and look at the significant changes. Obviously, we would do this. If you were to compare financial statements, this would come to mind pretty soon. We'd say, hmm, let's compare last year to this year and let's subtract them and see the difference and then we'd say ah well maybe i can the percentage might give me more insight and so we would do the percentage here say oh there's a 31 percent increase in accounts payable why i mean are we not paying our accounts as payable as fast or what's going on there accrued expenses went up deferred revenue other current liabilities significant increase we might want to go into that and take a look at it and and write down log down what happens see if it's if it's significant or if we need to make any changes current portion of long-term debt did we take out more debt did we take out another loan it seems to have increased and then we have the the long-term debt also also went up the long-term portion so again did we take out a loan looks like we did and then we have the other non-current liabilities 12 percent common stock so it, did, did we sell stock possibly here and so we can go through these percentages and they can give us some more insights into uh the analysis of the financial statements and again if, if you're thinking that the dollar change, you might think the dollar change is enough. I just need to know the dollar change. But honestly, if you, if you, any type of measurement tool that you're going to have when you're comparing different things, especially things of different sizes, the ratios are what you're, what you're really going to need. And they can give you a lot more insight to compare uh, different types of things. And that's the, that's what you want to get used to are these types of ratios. And once you do, they're not too bad. So here's just a look at the whole balance sheet. So here's the asset side and here's the liability side. Here's the current period, the prior period, current period, prior period, uh, the dollar change and the percentage change. Note that trend analysis is also a form of horizontal analysis. In a trend analysis, what we're going to do is compare everything to a base year. So in a trend analysis, we're comparing period over period again, but maybe possibly more than two periods. And therefore, we're going to be comparing to the base year. When we only have two years, we can consider the current year or the prior year the base year as well because we're doing a comparison to the prior year. But if we have multiple years, we have a, t a type of trend analysis and we're going to consider what the base year is. For example, here we're going to say this is the first year. This is going to be the base year. We're going to compare everything back to the base year. So when we do the comparison on year two and we come up with our percentages, we're comparing to uh, 2001 and then in 2000. Uh, x3 we're not comparing to 2000 x2 but back to 2000 x1 uh, 2000 x4 comparing back to 2000 x1 and that gives us everything based on the same base year to give us our trend analysis 
We'll talk more about trend analysis in a future presentation.